Flynn Dog Science with me, Caleb Flynn. Subscribe, like, comment, hit that bell. What's up, science lovers? Today we're going to be exploring attraction, repulsion, induction, and some other cool things related to the movement of negative charges. To start off today, what you'll want to get, you can get a couple balloons. I'm probably mainly going to use just one, so we got our color option here. And we'll see eventually, we'll see if we can make some paper move. I got some paper to stick on this one. First thing we want to do, let's take our piece of paper and cut it into little tiny pieces. Easiest way to do that that I found is just make some quick horizontal cuts here. So we got all of these cuts that are very close together like that, kind of like a little comb. And then do the perpendicular cut. Ah, missed. I got all my little piece of paper, I've gerbilized it. It's all these little tiny gerbil pieces. Don't need my scissors anymore. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take my balloon, either one, you could try different colors. I don't think it shouldn't really matter. Uh, but you can test and see, always test and see. So I have two balloons here. Uh, one thing you might wanna test, you can see this one is a little more filled up than that one. See if you get a little different results if you use different amounts of air in the balloon. Again, you're just filling these up with the air from your lungs, nothing special about that. Uh, you could fill it up with something else. I don't know if water will work. I've never tried it, but I don't think it would. Go ahead and try that, see if it works. Try this with water once we're done. I'm gonna rub this all over my shirt coat, my pants. Now watch what happens to these. You see them jump in there? Like little jumping beans. Ah! This is crazy. It's so fun. Charge is here. Let's do the other side. Nothing. Watch this. They jump. Nothing. They jump. Isn't that crazy? So when you rub it on something and put it straight on the paper, we see the, the papers jump up to the balloon, but when you rub the balloon and then you touch the balloon, so if I rub it and then rub it with my hand, we don't get any jumps. And if I rub it and then do the opposite side of the balloon, we don't get any jumps. It has to be straight rub right onto the paper. Let's see if we can explain that now. Let's figure out now, why did that paper jump up to the balloon and then fall or jump off once it had landed on the balloon? One thing we'll keep in mind is that electrons move and protons do not, and electrons are negative and protons are positive. So static electricity electron discovery, here we go. Let's start drawing our green balloon here. And what we notice is once we've drawn our green balloon is we gotta put in our negatives, which are red electrons and blue positives. Um, those are going to be the proton. The balloon is neutral at the start because there's equal amounts of positives and negatives. So neutral is when the electrons and protons are balanced. They're equal in number. And below that balloon, we have our desk. The desk is also neutral when we start, which means there's the same amount of protons present as electrons. And what we did with the balloon is we moved it to the desk and we rubbed it back and forth. So what happened when we rubbed the balloon back and forth? Well, we need to redraw, and we'll just draw this frame by frame of what was going on in our balloon. So we have our positive protons, negative electrons in both the balloon and the desk. The electrons went from the desk into the balloon. And so the electrons are picked up by the balloon, 
but the electrons cannot move around in the balloon. It's like they're stuck right there in that spot. And we saw that when we tried to rotate the balloon, nothing was really happening. But protons do not move. They're stationary. So um, we have our next little frame here. And we redraw our protons and electrons. But now we have more electrons in the balloon, making the balloon negative, And the top of our desk now would be positive. So the balloon now has more electrons than protons. And if you have more negatives than positives, that makes you negatively charged. Whereas the surface of the desk lost some electrons, so it's positively charged now. So it's positively charged because electrons were removed. Then we go to our next little frame. And now we enter our paper shavings. This is where we cut apart our little paper shavings. And we have our little paper shaving on the desk and we have our balloon. So our balloon has positive protons and extra electrons on it. And as a little side note, positive positive repels, positive and negative attract, and negative negative repel. So in our paper shavings, which are our protons and electrons, and we'll draw kind of a couple layers here, it's neutral overall because there's equal amounts. But the negative electrons in the balloon repel those top electrons in the paper. But the protons can't move. So the electrons in the balloon repel the electrons in the paper surface and vice versa. But only the electrons in the paper can move because the electrons are stuck in that balloon. So this means the electrons in the paper get repelled downward away from the surface of the paper. Um, and that's going to lead to that jumping. So let's see why it leads to that jumping there. So now we have our negative balloon. It has the extra electrons. The surface of our paper now is slightly positive. That's that symbol. It's partially positive because the electrons have been pushed downwards, whereas the bottom of the paper is partially negative. But overall, it's neutral because it hasn't lost or gained any electrons or protons, whereas the bottom of the balloon is truly negative. So what does that mean when you have a negative thing near a positive thing? Um, the balloon is attracted to the positive side of those paper shavings. So when we draw our paper shaving now, uh, what's going to happen if the negative side of the balloon is attracted to that positive side of the paper shaving? It's going to jump up there. And that's what we saw. We saw the paper leap up to the balloon. And now the negative part of the balloon, which had extra electrons, it's going to have some of those electrons which can move, go back on to that positive side of the paper. But the protons on the positive side of that paper, that partially positive side, they can't move. So what's that going to lead to? So the electrons on the balloon move into the paper. Then we get to our next little frame here. What does that lead to now that we have extra electrons in this paper? So we still have a negative paper because there's still leftover electrons that are there. But now we have new electrons in the surface of the paper and the old electrons. So there's more electrons in the paper than there is protons. So the paper is no longer neutral because it gained electrons. Now it's actually negative. It has more electrons than protons, making it negatively charged. So if we have a negative balloon and a negative paper, what's going to happen? So the bottom of the balloon still has extra electrons, making it negative. And the paper is negative. So when you got negative and negative, what's going to happen? We got repulsion. So those two negative parts of the balloon and the negative part of the paper, they repel each other. So then we draw our next little frame here. What happens when it repels? Well, we saw that paper jump off and fall off sometimes, which is just so cool. It's kind of crazy what happens there. So the balloon is still kind of negative. The paper is still kind of negative. And the paper is falling and jumping off. So the paper falls or often jumps off the balloon as the negatives repel each other. And we have three questions I'll kind of jot down here, the different sections. Why does the balloon become negatively charged? Well, that's um, stages one, two, and three. 
And the next question, why does the paper jump? That's four, five, and six. And the third one, why does the paper fall or jump off the balloon? Well, that's seven and eight frames. That's largely what I think is going on. There's some other things we could probably toss in. If you have any additional ideas or some critique, toss those down in those comments, and I'd love to hear your ideas, and we'll maybe next time make an even better diagram.